Welcome to another week of Brew Skies Booze News. I usually do this show with a guy named Brett Coleman Baker, but he is MIA in NOM, uh, along with a bunch of other great heroes that got blackout drunk at some huge conference over there. I have known Brett Coleman Baker for years, and you, sir, are no Brett Coleman Baker. I am no Brett Coleman Baker. Uh, I got crap, though, for trying to channel Brett with my tiny glass last week, and uh, we're yeah. not uh, to hell with it this yeah. week. Oh, how to fucking show yours is bigger than mine, eh? This is no schooner. This is a boot. <laughs> 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 this uh, Bruce Guys Booze News, we do in addition to a podcast called Bruce Guys that is a history of American craft beer. Both of those things, you know, require a lot of production and time. I mean, we've got the gnome here. Is there actually a trash can over there? There is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I make it most of the time, though. <laughs> you did. definitely did, did. not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we got to pay uh, Andrew in Narragansett, and you know that shit's not free. You, so not only used my real name. Yeah, I brought my own Narragansett. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Nevertheless, uh, please like, subscribe. We're on Patreon. If you're feeling generous, buy some beer, please. No, what's happening? Smash the like button. You're supposed to <laughs> smash it and like smash do something it. with the bell or something. I don't know, man. Sure. Uh, I'm a Patreon subscriber. I've oh. never gotten shit for it. I mean, I guess yeah, I got invited yet. here. Maybe yeah. maybe if you subscribe to Patreon enough, they'll invite you to come sit yeah. in this. This is not as nice as it looks when you're watching it from this side. Like everything on this side is terrible. Like there's like there's smoke over oh, there. Yeah. Like it's, everything's falling That's apart. Like there's holes in the there are holes true. in the floor. There are literal holes in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> looks nice. I think that might be a rat. rat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, at least uh, there are no Chinese brewers that have peed in this Narragansett. As far as you that know. We know of. <laughs> Is that a thing? I was, I was actually going to get, uh, uh, so there's a beer called, uh, uh Qing, Qing Dao, I think is how you're supposed to pronounce it. Sure. It's how you pronounce it. Sing Tao, if you are American. <laughs> yeah. Um, and evidently they're just peeing in the ingredients. There was a video yep. that, that popped up and has gone viral of, and the company says he was not actually employed by us. He was some other worker. I don't know what he was doing. Sure. Hanging out in the brewery. And that makes it form, fine. Whatever. Yeah. But yeah. he's, he like, he climbs into this big, like giant bin of grain, like climbs mm -hmm. in there, like you, and it's effort to get into this thing. Climbs in there, whips his, his, you know. Is, uh, Cock. Like, yeah, okay, that's, I was going to come up with some kind of fun word for it, as dingling or something, but whips it out and just starts peeing in the grain while he's standing in there, yeah. just hanging out, and he's looking around, like, no, nobody yeah. can see me, and, uh, okay, like, uh, that's ingredients before they go into the beer. Number sure. one, yeah. do you care? <laughs> Number two, uh, uh, what the hell is happening in China? <laughs> Why are they peeing in the beer? It's definitely not the worst thing happening in China. And I assume that that's what goes on with Bud Light. So... Uh, it would make sense. Yeah. I was... So I was going to bring Qingdao, uh, and that's what I was going to fill my boot with, but I couldn't find it quick enough here in Northside to bring it, so I couldn't. But yeah. I, I'm totally still drinking. I don't care. What I'm sure it's one of those beers, though, like Sapporo, which we have a beef with on a philosophical basis, but also is just vile beer. And I remember you know, thinking, oh, this is exotic beer when I was like 21. And it comes in the cool cans, and the cans really are a lot of fun to shoot, but the beer itself is just disgusting. I mean, it's just this watery, I mean, it's a, it's Bud Light-like, there's a bunch of rice in it, and, and it, um, it just sucks. You like, hit a certain point, and it just doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, that's not why people are drinking it. Like, it just doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's a big kind of, like, mishmash after a certain line of beer quality where people are just drinking the same stuff. Yeah. No matter where it's from. Uh, I assume that most places people aren't peeing in it, though. I assume. <laughs> Maybe that's I wishful don't... thinking. Yeah. Um, I've, I've been in I think it's a high. I think it's a high assumption. But I've also seen a lot of people like making my beer in, in like very reputable breweries, mm -hmm. and they're they're sweating in it and stuff. Yeah, too. oh like, sure, it's, it's sweats and beer it's on really the rag. It's fine. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? It's it's it's. It only it's, really matters when the person on the canning line is uh, 
Yeah, you know, if, if there's somebody sweating profusely, if there's somebody and, standing on the canning line and they're they're peeing, this right. is how I pee like this. Yeah, and they're peeing in right. the cans. Then it's I have very a impressive. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> much like my boot. So when Amazon starts making beer, be advised that you know no bathroom breaks. There's probably going to be piss yeah, in the beer. Be in your beer. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. It's fine as long as uh, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we talked. Last week about uh, young people, I feel like you guys. Always, I'm against them. You guys. I'm against them about young people. Yeah, um, those fucking kids. Uh, it's that that what do you call them? Gen Z? Is that right? I have to look at my notes. Gen Z. Gen Z. Yes. Which I which did is get, Chinese? I think I did, the way you pronounced it. <laughs> I did get a good definition. Uh, they're saying. Well, I didn't get a great definition. I got a good definition. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, the Pew Research Center says it's people born after 1996. But then they don't give a cutoff date of how how young they can be. Uh, general yeah, consensus so. is uh, um, people that were uh, born before the early 2010s. So 96 hmm. to 2010s. Okay. So half of these little shits still can't drink. Yeah. So how are we like defining like what their drinking habits are before they're even able to drink? The whole thing's crazy, and that's... The, well, yeah. I mean, it's going to be... The, you're going to be defining the patterns of 20-somethings. The generations are arbitrary to begin with, but within any generation, there are pretty distinct sub-generations. You know, they tend to look more like what comes on either side of it, and really, it's just a horseshit construct. Um, but so, whatever. So, I mean, except for Gen X, and we just ruled. But... Uh, <laughs> I still don't know what and boomers. I am. I still don't know where I belong. Millennial. And boomers. Millennials, is that right? Millennials? Is that what I Yeah, am? you're a millennial. Okay, I'm yeah. a millennial. And boomers uh, uh, objectively just destroyed the goddamn country. So I guess there are some things that you can say about, and Gen Z is weird. We all destroy it in our own way. But so there's a really, really great two-part series on goodbeerhunting.com. Go, go. If you don't already like, yeah. go there and read shit, go there every time you get a chance and go there and yeah. read stuff. Two-part series where they talk about young drinkers and how they're not really drinking less. They're just drinking different. And on top of that, that we don't really still understand who yeah. they are. Uh, and there's like all I, kinds of stats that I wrote down that are crazy. I teach them, and I definitely don't understand who they are. Uh, one in five Gen Z adults, so that's, again, half of the generation, the people that are adults currently, uh, identify as LGBTQ. What's the percentage? Uh, one in five. Yeah. Uh, On top of that, a 2021 study found that 76% of LGBTQ adults are also identifying as non-binary, and they are in that generation. So, uh, what is it, 70, 70, I wrote it down somewhere, something like 76% of people that identify as part of the LGBTQ community are Gen Z. So, like, we're still, like, just scratching the surface of understanding, like, who this generation really is. They are still scratching the surface of understanding who they are. How can we, like, well, put, how can we put all of this yeah. in any kind of, like, how can we classify any of this? I mean, when it comes to sexuality, I don't think that they're any different than anybody that came before. It's a matter of attitude. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I've got a, a friend who has a Gen Z kid, and he said to me the other day, you know, the thing about Gen Z is, like, for them... Uh, sexual orientation is not a big deal, and right. they prove it by making it a huge fucking deal. But here's here's where it gets interesting: is that every alcohol company for for decades and decades and decades market a very certain way, and they market towards a very misogynistically. Specific person, and it's a, a lot white of, man, yeah. a white straight male, is who mm-hmm. they are marketing towards. Uh, that's not who Gen Z is. In in fact, like it goes it goes further that like. By in 2019, the majority of alcohol consumers were under the age of 25 were women. And then on top of that, there the Census Bureau says that by uh, 20, Jesus, this is not, everything's chaos here. Uh, by uh, 2026, um, the, the majority of drinkers will be non white women from that generation. Hmm. 
Well, they're the they ones getting all the jobs you. now. Nobody else can afford to drink. So, so like, but but so the, the the marketing has to change if these yeah. alcohol companies want Gen Z to be drinking their products. They like Certainly. they're looking for something that communicates to them, and Bud Light may not be it. No, I, they're def, they're not. There's definite downtrends in light beer and really good because why did anybody ever drink light beer? Because they don't like the taste of beer and they wanted to get drunk. So there are just a lot better options for that now. So I don't think that, you know, less people drinking light beer doesn't really mean anything to me. But if beer as a beverage wants to hold its own, it, it is going to need to shift its mentality and its image and how it thinks about marketing. Well, every, every beverage, you know, bourbon for, for decades has been this male dominated right. thing too, of these guys, you know, sitting yeah. in the back room with their cigars and yes. playing pool and yeah. sipping their bourbon. It's all a load of horse shit. Like I just figure well, out, you know, figure yeah. out different ways to market to different people and market to those people. And like, as a company, you don't have to just like focus on this spot of the market. Like this is our people. These are who we have, you know, it's, and they're, they're Hopefully yeah. they're figuring that out, I guess. Here at Bruce Guys, we believe in pandering like fuck to whoever uh, is going to smash that like button. Smash the like button. We really don't. We've right. managed to offend everybody. Can, but you, <laughs> can you smash a Patreon sub subscription? How do you do it on... Do you kick it? Kick, I, kick your Patreon I, subscription. I guess. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> just, just do it. Just, just you, pluck the thing, so, please. But this idea, this idea that young people aren't drinking is a is a is a load of horseshit. Uh, they're all drinking the same. In fact, people are still drinking the same amount they always have. They uh, Gallup does this study. They've been doing it since the '40s, where they you know figure out you know what people are drinking, how often they're drinking, and how much they're drinking. And uh, in 1940, uh, so you know. A long time ago, people were drinking 2.3 gallons per capita in, in this country. What do you think they're drinking today? Are you going to tell me 2.3 gallons? It's 2.3 gallons. Everybody is still drinking the same amount. They're just drinking different shit. It's just everybody's just drinking however they feel comfortable. And if you make them comfortable, they're going to drink your stuff. Yeah. That's, 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 it's very simple. So make it sugary. <laughs> I, see... I disagree that uh, sugar is the solution to everything. I just think that the sugary beverages have been better about uh, pandering towards everybody. Sure. I mean, it's an easier, they're an easy gateway. And yeah, if you combine that with the marketing of uh, hitting young generations then who uh, you're who gonna, can't you're get behind that. that stupid rabbit that can't get his cereal everybody loves him sure but bud light pisses off half of the country well so like it's yeah. just it's a it's a scope of things <laughs> that's not yeah i mean that was really there's half the country to blame for that <laughs> more than bud light I, but i blame the entire country for what happened with bud light it's all of it's everybody's yeah. fault I mean, I heard, so we talked about the whole Bud Light thing a couple of times before I finally, like, watched that short little clip uh, <laughs> that enraged half it's... the nation. And I'm like, what the hell? Where was the, uh, can, where was the anything to this? Can you imagine, like, what that does to her, to, to, to Dylan? To, oh, like, my this, God. This like, how, like, do you think, like, how do you, like, not... Number one, like think you have some kind of power over things that you don't at that point. Right, like, oh, God, like I can kill any company. Yeah, at this point. <laughs> yeah, like I can do whatever I want. Yeah, but then like on the other hand, you're like, oh my God, like uh, the world hates me. Like there's so many people out there that all I have to do is like say, hey, I like this restaurant, and yeah. people are now gonna just like burn it to the ground. Like it's such a weird thing. I would love to do that interview actually because oh. it it would have to be there would have to be a duality to it. I mean, for one thing, you because I, who would have known who that person was, but for the Bud Light yep. nonsense. First time I heard about him. So. There's that. I mean, I mean, there's the whole sort of being rocketed to fame and, okay, you're hated, but you haven't done anything embarrassing 
uh, or or dickish to be hated. You know, you're hated for being you. And well, she's probably done like like she's in your life. You've probably done something that is probably way worse. That, like you were probably like a real oh asshole at some point. Like we've all been assholes at some point. This was not the thing that you could like point at and be like, "Hey, this was you did this and this was bad." I and, do something more assholeish by Tuesday of every given week. She didn't really do anything asshole at all. All right. See that? Okay. Let's well, you're out. closer. <laughs> they also can't see if it went in. Well, you can hear it. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it proper etiquette to drink your boot with two hands, or are you supposed to use one? I don't know. I think it's a two-handed thing. Mm. I don't know. Depends on how drink. It needs some kind of a handle. Yeah. Um, so, how do you feel about weed? I'm for it. I, I'm for it too. I think uh, it it freaks me out, especially now, like this weird in between world we live in. Yeah. Um. Uh. So Southern Glazers is the biggest uh, uh, alcohol and or I think technically uh, spirits and wine distributor in the country. I think is how it's probably specifically worded. Uh, very big distributor, huge, tons of money. They've been building this side of their business of hemp-derived products. We mm -hmm. have to word it very carefully. It's hemp-derived. It is not uh, weed. Um, since 2021, I think. Building all these brands. But which means what from it's a legal weed. standpoint? It's, 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 it's like fizzy weed water. Okay, so it has THC in it. You're not like hiding behind CBD. No, no. There's some of that is CBD. Some of it is, it is THC, but it's not. Uh, there's some kind of like, molecule bonding something. Oh, well, like Delta Eight in Kentucky yeah. has been like a loophole where you yeah. can legally buy Delta Eight. But that's still THC. Even though, uh, yeah, but it it is, yeah. For some reason, it falls outside of some molecular definition. I don't understand of any of that stuff. Uh, I don't understand no, any don't. of it. I know that if I... I understand ate, how uh, Delta 8 gets me high a little bit differently. You but, I, smoke but, I still, but I still get high. Yes. And so, like, it's... Still, it's so still I, definitely I don't, I don't weed get it, high. So, whatever. Uh, but the, the beverages that have this Delta 8 mm -hmm. or other hemp-derived products mm -hmm. are, are legal. No, no, they're not. I don't know that they're. I don't. I don't know. Some places. I don't know how this works. I don't know how it works, but there is lots of beverages that have this hemp derived product in them. Uh, Southern Glazers has been building this side of their portfolio since 2021, and supposedly, and they have not confirmed this, but uh, several of their brands that they were building this portfolio with have either uh, been let go or. Uh, uh, They've severed the business relationship amicably, amicably, am, am, amicably. Sure, whatever. Uh, Amity, Amity Bill, uh, mm -hmm. Narragansett. It's I all, struggle with Argentina. Amicable Argentina. is your. Uh, I will always refer yeah. to as Argentinian. That's as you should watch, actually. Watch last week's episode. It's a new name. Really. <laughs> but uh, what does this mean for these hemp-derived beverages? Uh, is this like a uh, some kind of doom? hammer of death uh, for what this this side of the beverage market could I be. suspect that they're probably just ahead of the market but the market's not defined yet the same thing happened I mean like when marijuana was legalized in Canada um, people is that, is that similar to Argentina it's very similar but it's north uh, a lot of people you know flooded Canada weed companies yeah. with a lot of investment and you know the stocks soared and dropped and leveled off because it you know they, they were overly exuberant about the market it doesn't mean that there isn't a market I mean I've gotten high as shit in Canada uh, the past couple of years and dispensaries in British Columbia dispensaries are all over the place so the market is doing fine. It just had to find itself. I think that it's going to grow to some extent, but there's also some level of, of plateau with it. You know, when you legalize marijuana, there are people that will 
smoke or eat or drink marijuana that otherwise wouldn't. I mean, you are going to see an uptick in the use, period, the end, but it's also gonna plateau. It doesn't mean that everybody's gonna do it. It doesn't mean that everybody's gonna start getting high all the time. No, but if, if the biggest distributor is saying, ah, we're just not gonna carry any of it anymore, like that, like what is that gonna do to the market? Like to this, I don't know. It's, it's, it could, it's it could, strange to it see could them collapse it for. If, and that is, this is all, if they're actually yeah. backing out, which they have not confirmed, uh, if that's actually the truth, uh, that's that's a that's a weird move when things are yeah. just now starting to hit this point where people are starting to accept it. Uh, my well, I shouldn't say this, but uh, we, I have family members that I would have never dreamed. I, I shouldn't say any of this. <laughs> that, say it all. That are now imbibing in some kind of uh, some kind of uh, you know tinctures that uh, that make them feel good. You know, like it's yeah. it's crazy. Well, the the fantastic thing. I mean, actually. Marijuana has never been my thing, which is not to say that I haven't, you know, smoked a lot of it, but um, it's never been my my drug of choice. I do love legalized marijuana because you can really control what you're taking. That's I mean, you know 100%. proper doses, you know effect. I mean, I am very much a sativa guy, and I like edibles, and you know, I know. It's it's a precise thing as opposed to you know is this going is this brownie gonna just yeah. send me into like it's hallucinatory it's, territory in the next hour? I love that I can walk into a bar and I can look at the tap list. I can see a beer and say that's eight percent. I know exactly right. how much alcohol that is and how it's gonna make me feel yeah. after I drink that beer over the next half hour. Right, and that for a long time was not the case with. With weed, no. We go to your very consistent. Oh, here's some weed. Okay, what's that gonna do to me? I don't know. And so I, I love that side of, yeah. of where things are going. But uh, this 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 idea of them backing out of it is is very strange to me. I don't know. I mean, have you drank we these weed drinks? I have drank some weed drinks, but I'm gonna have uh, shameless plug. If you have not already got your tickets for Beer, Booze, and Bonks this year, my beer festival at Falling Warehouse, November 11th, get your tickets, beerboozeandbonks.com. Uh, we're going to have weed waters there. Because yeah. There's a couple weed waters. And right. and they got me a little come, high. Come and drink. <laughs> got me a little high. So uh, just a word of warning. If it says weed, I don't think it says weed. It probably won't say weed. If this is something related to weed. Uh, don't drink it if you don't want to be high. I want to talk about vintage spirits. Okay. Do, do you know anything about this whole vintage spirits law in Kentucky? I do not. It's crazy stuff. And this is, you know, uh, uh, full disclosure, one of my clients is Revival in Kentucky, and they are a vintage spirits uh, shop. Uh, full disclosure uh, ahead of time. The Kentucky ABC is starting to crack down on a couple of these vintage spirits dealers. There is this weird law in Kentucky, and I say weird because there's only a couple places in the country where you can do this. Yeah. Uh, some Yahoo, anybody can walk in the store and say, hey, my grandpa died, and on his bar were these 15 bottles of bourbon or whatever. Right. Uh, do you guys want to buy them? And the shop can say, yeah, we'll buy them from you, and then they'll resell them to other people. That's like an actual thing that can happen now. Yeah. Uh, started in like 2018, I think, passed in 2017, uh, and, and went into effect in 2018. However, there have been several stores in the great state, of the great commonwealth of Kentucky, that uh, have decided they're going to use this to kind of uh, weasel their way into selling uh, some stuff that may not be so vintage. Yeah. And, and the state is cracking down on it, and... Cracking down very hard and threatening to take away licenses and uh, making life very difficult for everybody. Well, I, shouldn't it have occurred to somebody to define vintage in uh, that they, piece of legislation? They, 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 they didn't very well. It is uh, a a a uh, spirit that is not commonly currently available at a wholesaler. Hmm. So it doesn't have a time nope. restriction on it. 
So where is that weird, like, where is that line? Well, uh, then, I mean, if you're going to craft that legislation that way, then you are asking <laughs> for somebody to resell, you know, the it's, Pappy <laughs> bottle they only paid $400 for for $1,400. But, and, and so, like, where is the, but where is that, like, if I buy a bottle of bourbon, especially when you start talking, like, single barrel bourbon, like, that bourbon is never available again like i can i could say that once that barrel of bourbon is sold uh even if i call a distributor and or a wholesaler and, and they say oh yeah we have uh this new version of blanton's available uh it's not this version of Blanton's. this bottle is not available because yeah. it was only available with this barrel uh, so that is now in this vintage spirits law and uh, that's what they're doing. That is what a lot of places that are using this vintage spirits all are doing. They, um, here's the, the fun stat, uh, is uh, a third of all sales under this vintage spirits law have been two brands. You want to guess? Blanton's and Pappy? Uh, Blanton's and Weller. Yeah. Are the, the, Weller is essentially yeah. Pappy. Uh, those are your two brands that are selling almost there. Like, you're talking thousands of bottles of Weller and Blanton's that are being uh, dumped under this vintage spirits all, which uh, are arguably vintage or not, but not, not the dusty stuff that's really fun. I get the intent of it. I mean, it because I know people that are antique dealers and they were kind enough wants to drink a bottle of pre-prohibition whiskey with yep. me. And they did that in part, you know, just because obviously I'm fun to drink with, but uh, secondarily because you, the, you, there wasn't a real- There was no uh, Market for it. Right. You know, it wasn't legal to sell it uh, at the time that they had it in the state of Ohio. So, uh, it didn't mean people weren't selling it, but you couldn't you couldn't put it on a website and sell it. And there's no good reason for that. I mean, it, people should be people want to collect it. And if it's a sealed bottle of liquor, whatever, it's gonna I mean it's whiskey. It's gonna age. It's gonna be fine. It's not gonna make you sick. Or if it does, and you just pay two grand for it, and whatever, fuck you. Um, so the, the point is, I, I understand the legislation, but you know that sounds like a problem of. Uh, Bad legislation. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it, it, it's you you have to pay attention to how you write a piece of legislation. You touched on something that I think is really important there. That people are going to sell it no matter what. That right. that whole market is going to exist. If somebody stumbles across a bottle of booze from pre-prohibition and they're like, I don't want to drink this they're selling it to somebody that does or somebody yes. that wants to collect it and then kind of keep spreading it around. So eventually right. somebody wants to drink it. Uh, there should be a way for the government to say, yep, yep, you can legally sell that and we're going to collect more tax money off of it. Th this is not a, uh, a bad thing. This, the fact that the legislation exists, yeah. they just need to like dial it in and be like, all right, so here's, here's what it means. You can't go in and buy all of this year's uh, Pappy and then resell it legally outside of the distillery because you decided that you're some kind of liquor scalping. Yeah, there's it's a it's a weird kind of uh, um, give and take that the state is going to have to figure out here. It's uh, I'll tell you what depresses the shit out of me. <sighs> this T-shirt that I'm wearing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's vintage. It is and vintage. I bought it at the show, you know. And that is disturbing to me at this point. <laughs> so, doing the math in my head, that makes you a lot older than me. <laughs> I think I was shit in my pants when you. <laughs> well, you might have been too, but for different reasons. <laughs> Definitely pissing in a beer. <laughs> do you have a uh, non-alcoholic story this week? I do have a non-alcoholic story this week. And it does not involve Argentina. Uh, Elon Musk. Oh, that guy. That guy. Is this about the beer that we talked about last week? The stupid like Tesla beer? No. Okay, that's it's relief. Even worse. Oh no. <laughs> Elon Musk has offered Wikipedia a billion oh, dollars if they will rename themselves Dickopedia. <laughs> 
because he is a dick. He's just messing with everybody, which is... That's pro- that's what you would do too if you had that much money. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, yes, but it's the would. problem. It's the problem with a system that you know encourages uh, and enables individuals to be that rich because it doesn't make you a good person. You know, it just makes you really rich. And his problem, but it, I love his problem with Wikipedia. I mean, it is fantastic, classic Elon Musk. He thinks Wikipedia has too much money. That's Elon Musk's problem with Wikipedia. They have okay. too much money. Because they're a nonprofit, and he's like, you know, what does Wikipedia need all this money for? Do well, they have too much money? Because they're always asking you to I don't donate. know how much. They are always asking you to donate. They are a nonprofit, and they update 44 million sites a month. Jesus so they're doing a lot of work. And guess what Wikipedia doesn't do? They're they're are they doing that much work or like other people like that's the weird thing about Wikipedia is that it's other people updating stuff too. That was the original problem with Wikipedia. So at least in theory today, mm-hmm. there is somebody fact checking mm-hmm. every time you make an update to Wikipedia to make sure that it is accurate information. So that is a massive amount of work. And what has Wikipedia not done? Crashed like that shitty app formerly known as Twitter in spectacular manner. Sure. I mean, Wikipedia, it's got its falls, but um, is Wikipedia more competent than the shitty app formerly known as Twitter? Absolutely it is. Are you are you run on, by smarter and better people? Are you on uh, the the Twitter machine? Fuck no! See, I, I thought it was stupid from the beginning. I was, and like I'm 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 not really anymore, and like I I can't figure out exactly why, but I just don't like it anymore. There's an experience thing that's happened since he took over that I just I just I don't like. So. If take you that, do anything in your life that gives Elon Musk more money, stop doing it. I feel like we're all doing something that is giving him more money. I don't know what it is at this point, but I feel yeah. like he's got his fingers in just about everything. Definitely uh, Bezos. I mean, you can't. Well, yeah, I can't really stop turn that. around. Can't stop that. We also have a non story of the week. Clarence Thomas still taking bribes. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's the question of the week? Because that's what I really, really am I'm curious about. <laughs> yeah, we forgot we forgot to start with it. Uh, I thought uh, I throw everything off. That's my, what I do. With my life. question of that you've done fantastic, Gnome, as a as a Brett stand-in. Mm. I'm gonna keep uh, showing up every week and sitting right back that's, there that's in fine. that hole in the floor. I'm gonna that's sit in that hole. It. <laughs> I'm gonna try to patch that soon, but <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Looks Thanks comfy. for you. I built a bar, motherfucker. It looks comfy. I built a bar. I didn't I'll get to the hole. I didn't know that you took the wood for the bar <laughs> from the floor. <laughs> I had to come from somewhere. Jeez. <laughs> Jesus Christ! You know what lumber costs now? <laughs> uh, here's my question to you: Where is the weirdest place you have ever woken up? Uh. So clearly, after do, do, you, do you want my actual answer? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. uh, I had an experience uh, following a night at Hofbrauhaus House yeah. where I woke up uh, in jail, uh, and I woke up because somebody was coming into the cell, uh, the holding the the, right. the, drunk the drunk tank, tank. the drunk tank. Mm-hmm. He was coming in and he was yelling. And I had had a, an okay night at that point. Yeah. I'd I'd found a little ball yeah. that I could curl sure. up in and get somewhat comfortable. There's bars and, in this room, but it's not and, much and, worse than those outside. Not a concrete, and I was yeah. using the the concrete kind of curb thing as a, mm-hmm. as a pillow. And this guy comes in, he's yelling, and he's raising all kinds of hell, and he's talking about needing a roll of toilet paper. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, we're in this little tiny room uh, with this little toilet in the middle of the room. Uh, don't do this mm-hmm. right now. Like, just like this is like, you couldn't figure out a way to, to right. solve this beforehand. Um, yeah. 
and uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 jailer are they jailers? Is uh, the uh, sure uh, the, the the jail keep? You mm-hmm. know whoever this fine gentleman was yes. that was uh, tending jail. Uh, Turnkeys, <laughs> they called him in the nineteenth century. Let's go with that. He, he said, "I'll get you your toilet paper." You know, shut up, and he doesn't stop. Eventually, the jail keep comes back with a roll of toilet paper, and he throws it at the guy, and he says, now shut your mouth, and the guy catches it, and he looks at all of us, and he says, now I got my pillow, and he takes this roll of toilet paper, <laughs> and he tucks it under his head, and he lays down in the corner, and he goes to sleep, and I'm like, oh my god. The next time I get Genius. locked up in the fine jails of Newport, yeah. uh, I know my tactic. There is your hack. For so sleeping in the drunk that's, tank. That's the best story I have of waking up in a weird spot in the middle of chaos. What about you? There's been a lot of them. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, I probably forget a lot. But one that, that really kind of sticks out to me, I was in Athens and where I woke up in odd places all the time. But on one particular occasion, I was living that year on one of the higher, more residential street. Residential meaning like real people live there yeah. interspersed with students, not just uh, students. So I'm walking back to my house, but I apparently couldn't make it any more than about halfway down that street. A value number. And so I laid down on this porch swing. Uh, I mean, I don't remember the process of laying down this porch swing. But I, I woke up. I woke up, and it was summer. It was summer semester. And by the time I wake up, it's bright, and it's like a 1,000 degrees, and I'm on somebody's porch swing, and under me is a lot of my own... Uh, sickness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, this porch swing, as I sit there, you know, looking at the sun, trying to remember who I am and figure out where I'm at, I realize this porch swing is right in front of this uh, picture window, mm-hmm. you know, with the curtains open and the TV on. So <laughs> people are obviously <laughs> drinking their coffee. Sitting, out of breakfast. <laughs> yeah. They're so, obviously sitting it's, right there. It's so beautiful and horrifying at the same time. <laughs> and I had to try to figure out how to get off the porch without like breaching the window Ow. and not crawling in the mess that I had created below me. And uh, it was ugly. I see. I feel like if I lived, like actually lived, like post college life in uh, Athens, uh, I feel like I would be okay with that. I'd be like, all right, hey man, like here's here's uh, here's some breakfast, here's some toast, here's some eggs, and yeah. a cup of coffee if you need that. Uh, here's the hose. Uh, take care of this, and uh, you know, could pat your butt and like get on your way, yeah. young fella. <laughs> that's what that's <laughs> what you say, but. Uh, I lived in Clifton Heights for a long time. (laughs) When I got out of law school, I moved to Cincinnati, and I bought a place in Clifton Heights right near UC. And there were a few years Uh, where... Clifton and Athens are two very different places. They are different. But, I mean, there were years where I just took it, where I was like, this is karma. Because I was such a (laughs) dick to my neighbors for four solid years that... You know, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this for a while, and I think I probably did. I think I probably took it for a good four years uh, before I just started calling well, the cops. You did your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel good about working on my own karma on that one. <laughs> you've you've worked it off somehow. <laughs> well, yeah, that. I mean, not the rest of it, but uh, but I try. It's been another week of Bruce Guys Booze News Gnome. Thanks for the past two weeks. Uh, Prost. Oh, that sounds good. (laughs) Brett, we have a search party for in Vietnam, and we anticipate him being back almost certainly with malaria by next week. I saw a picture of him online. He looks like he's fine. Love you guys. Cheers. Smash the like button.